Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Great panelists with topical issues, no holds barred. We tell it like it is. On today's episode, I'll be addressing ethnic and racial challenges in our modern world. Chiledu will reflect on the plight of children in the midst of protests as poignant and raised significant questions about the future of society that has failed to provide for its youngest members. From London, Victor will be speaking on a heartbreaking and deeply troubling event that has shaken the United Kingdom. Inikbi will help us look beyond the Nigerian August protests. Permit me to lead the way right after this short break. Addressing ethnic and racial challenges in our modern world. The brotherhood of man transcends the sovereignty of nations, and that's from JCI Creed. Despite the progress we've made, ethnic and racial tensions will shape the lives of many communities around the globe. Today, let's look at three specific issues. Tribal bigotry in Lagos, anti-migrant sentiment in the UK, and the struggle for racial equality and diversity in the US. Tribal bigotry. Hashtag the Igbo must go campaign in Lagos. The Igbo must go campaign in Lagos has highlighted deep seated tribal divisions. The Igbo community has faced growing discrimination and hostility, a stark reminder of the ethnic tensions that have plagued Nigeria. This campaign threatens the unity and prosperity of a diverse city like Lagos, reminding us all of the importance of fostering understanding and solidarity among different ethnic groups. On anti-migrant sentiment in the United Kingdom. Across the United Kingdom, anti-migrant sentiment is on the rise. Many migrants, especially those from non-European countries, encounter prejudices and restrictive policies that make their lives more difficult. This contribution of this the contribution of the individuals to the United Kingdom's economy and culture are often overshadowed by negative stereotype and political rhetoric that paints them as threats. This growing division is harmful, making it harder for migrants to integrate and contribute positively to the society. On DEI profiling in the US, especially in the US presidential race, racial profiling and DEI remain critical issues in the United States, particularly in the presidential race between Kamala and Trump. Despite progress, Biases persist in law enforcement and minorities are underrepresented in leadership rules. Their contrasting views on these topics will shape the political landscapes and voter sentiments. In conclusion, to tackle these issues, we need a holistic approach involving policy changes, community engagement, and education. It's about building a world where unity and inclusivity are the forefront, ensuring everyone has the opportunity to thrive. My fellow advocates, mm. now on this tribal bigotry issue, you saw what happened during this last uh, protest, the just concluded protest, where mm -hmm. we have not finished addressing the issue yes. of the protest. Then some other elements, who I want to refer to as disgruntled elements, whom I know most of them are not even in this country because you cannot live in a house and want to set the house on fire mm. and you are trying to whip up tribal sentiment against a, a certain tribe. Yeah. Hashtag the Igbo must go campaign. So, Madam Chini, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. First of all, I'm Igbo and I've not <laughs> heard the invitation to leave Lagos. So, where exactly is it happening? I'm, I'm wondering, is the media not giving too much life to something that is almost nonsensical? Because I don't, um, I've not even heard it. A few people that I've spoken to about it, they haven't heard it. Except maybe when people are looking at trending topic that I think is even AI generated in some cases to make it trend. But seriously, I come from a family where half of my siblings are married to Yoruba people. Hmm. So where are we keeping the children? And if we're, going to, if we're going to invite Solomon to this case, how are we going to split my nieces and my nephews? They will divide them into half. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, I, I just think that um, we have issues that unite us, which is the struggles that Nigerians are having every single place that you go. 
if you if we key into this for the just for the sake of uh, talking about it are yoruba people not suffering in terms of uh, poverty do mm -hmm. we not have poor yoruba people no. yeah. so if we have yoruba people who are suffering what is going to become of them are they now going to say okay because we're yorubas and we're here and lagos is a profitable uh, state are we going to split the money because if you want to divide people you need to establish the grounds for division and believe you me we all have grounds for division so if we're giving life to something that is so nonsensical being that we're just all recovering from the protest mm -hmm. that is affecting all of us Igbo Yoruba house so we're all buying yam for 10,000 naira Precisely. or 9,000 9, naira. So I'm, am I going to use Biafran shillings to buy yam in Anambra state or Imo state? Uh, and then the Lagos person using naira to buy yam for, is it four naira they will be buying it mm -hmm. when Igbo people go? So seriously, if the real important, I mean like the chiefs and all of that in Igbo land that have businesses here are not even... Uh, taking this thing seriously, then who am I to uh, give life to this? For me, I don't think we should overflog this issue because it doesn't make any sense. If you say Igbos must go, what are the modalities for Igbos leaving? And don't forget that when Igbo people get to the Niger Bridge, where are they going to go? <laughs> Will you from Lagos now go to the person who is living in his mansion okay. somewhere in Onicha and say, okay, you are not from uh, Anna, uh, Onicha, so moving to Oka or Newi, where you come from. Because the division is not going to stop here. Then who takes over the Igbo people's properties that were leaving behind? That yeah. brings me to this aspect of the law. Okay. Before you go deeper, no, you are the lawyer, yeah. so you have background of the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Victor is back. Yeah, Victor, Victor is back. Um, I was going to ask you, um, before, or maybe you just hold on, let me hear my thoughts uh, so okay. now this issue of Igbo must go, mm -hmm. you know, um, just like you said, poverty is tribalist. Poverty has no tribe. Precisely. The Nigerian economic problem has no tribe, mm -hmm. right? Now the issue surrounding Igbo, hashtag Igbo must go, you need to know, just like you said, you have some of your family members are married to persons from other, especially mm -hmm. Yoruba tribe. Now, the, the, late, the, the late, uh, the, the, the Ohanese president general, the Ohanese. The in the, uh, is in the mm. that just passed on, yeah, Emmanuel mm -hmm. His daughter, I think he has members of a family that got married to yeah. traditional rulers' children of Ibadan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. children. So, so we are so much in love with ourselves. <laughs> we <laughs> have Igbo. We have yes. Igbo that fall in love with Yoruba. So, so, yeah. so okay, the legality so. of this Nigerian constitution said a Nigerian can live and thrive anywhere. and prosper yeah. anywhere. Precisely. So, so, um, so this is it, right? In the midst of the protest, or whilst this news came on, um, what came to mind was, why is this coming up? Why is tribal, you know, bigotry coming up when we have greater issues to face as a country? We have this hunger. I mean, this instability in the state of our economy. So why are we, why are we now making, you know, meaning to what is not right, bringing about bigotry, tribal bigotry, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so yes, back to the legality, right? So we were discussing, and then I said that, truly, this doesn't make any sense, and this is unconstitutional, right? Because as a citizen of Nigeria, you have the right to live and reside, you know, in whichever state in the country, right? It is your right. So why would you, as a fellow citizen, come up to say, oh, Igbo must go? They are only exercising their right. Every, if I go to, if I go to, um, I schooled in Ibadan, right? So, and I had the right to school there, right? Because I am a citizen of Nigeria. I can decide to reside in anywhere but, in but Nigeria. who is behind it? Who is it behind you know, it? Actually, yeah. There have been some disgruntled elements from different, like recently, when the, I am happy that the governor of Lagos State and where many Nigerians and stakeholders have come out to condemn this. So yes. some of the persons perpetrating this idea, many of them are not even res resident in Nigeria. In they Nigeria. are in, Nigerians in other countries trying to incite violence. That's yeah, why I said you cannot burn down the I house. I remember you are there's in. this guy that was arrested in the UK because the UK government uh, said you cannot be in the UK and then you're fermenting trouble in, in your, in your in land. State. Okay, so you were saying that Nigeria has right, a Nigerian has rights to thrive and prosper and live anywhere. Like, Precisely. Yeah, some Nigerians, like even in Lagos politics, we yeah. have some Igbos exactly that are actually that involved in Lagos politics. Precisely. And they're doing very well. Yeah. 
They so, do very well. So, so no what, what are we foul. saying? It's not <laughs> yeah, a, a young man like Davido can fall in love with a choma from Imo State mm -hmm. and then they live happily ever after. Happily ever after. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> now, um, uh, Victor, I, I, I don't know whether you heard of this background before we go to the Bangladesh issue. Let me give you a background of what happened in South Africa if you're there. You know, um, speaking about tribal bigotry, um, oh. unguarded nationalism, xenophobia, and what do, you, what do you have? Now, in South Africa, there's this case of a Nigerian lady. She's, she, let's say, a Nigerian girl who has a Nigerian father and a Mozambican mother. I think she was giving birth to in South Africa. Yes, she was. And, of course, I don't know, in Nigeria, yeah, you know, when you give birth to your child here, you are automatically that child is a His Nigerian. Citizen. Same with many other Western world. If you give birth to a child in the UK, some other Western countries, mm -hmm. they adopt the same model. Precisely. Now, is it so, of, is it so important that um, South Africans don't want, what is so special about someone not, in quotes, is not a South African by, by blood, mm. don't represent us in our beauty pageant? Mm. I thought... Migrants, whether by birth or by parents coming in or mm -hmm. by you coming in, if you're in a particular spouse. place, if you're if you're if you're prospering in that place, mm -hmm. you should be given opportunity to thrive there because mm -hmm. when you thrive better, the place will also be prosperous. Yeah. So, what's your take on this issue of South Africans complaining about a Nigerian, Mozambican, South African not representing them in their beauty pageant? I want to hear your thoughts on this. Addition, actually, my right, that's her name. Yeah. Victor, please. Yeah, thank you, Elijah. Um, I followed this on Twitter, and I think that uh, when you look at these conversations here, yeah, it's not about even South Africa or Mozambique or Nigeria. I think it's much more deeper. Um, we need to come back and ask ourselves what is really, you know, um, what kind of value we want to live by, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Chinedu was talking about um, the prices of things in the market is... It doesn't have any tribe attached to it. It doesn't have any country attached to it. And when you look at how you progress as a nation, right, what makes America, America, what makes, you know, um, all the highly developed nations, what makes them get to that level, right? It's about common values, shared interests, right? You know, when you talk about how you advance as a people, those things are not, you know, relative to a certain ethnic, it's not relative to a certain tribe or a certain country. You know, things like, you know, um, progress, things like, you know, um, well, things like, you know, um, hard work and all of those kind of things, right? It's, there's no hard work for these certain people and then these other certain people. Integrity is integrity anywhere, right? If, in, I mean, if you leave Nigeria, and go to South Africa, you know, there's no South African integrity uh, or Nigerian integrity. It's the same thing. It's very important that this um, Chidima uh, issue, the South African thing, we, we actually uh, use this opportunity to educate people. Okay. Now, regardless of what is happening, everybody's saying xenophobia and uh, what, what. The issue on ground is Afrophobia. Xenophobia typically is a fear of strangers. But well, Afrophobia oh. is when Africans are scared of fellow Africans for whatever reasons. Now, the issue of Chidema, what we need to learn from this is that the truth of this matter, we do not know. The mm -hmm. parents may or may not have done their complete documentation. And yeah, this, this is a question of maybe the sins of the father or the parents. When you migrate to a country, you need to make sure that your papers are in order. Complete. It's not everywhere that is like Nigeria that we really do not pay a lot of mind to things because you never know when you're going to meet this. Now, if Chidima's mother is South African, she needs to come out. Her and, mother is Mozambican. Whatever, if she's... Please, let me say, let me mention these names so that you will tell me. Barack Hussein Obama. Kenya, Muslim, Kenya. But he became the president of America. Mm, so when Donald Trump was doing the birther thing, because he's a black man and he's doubting his heritage and parentage and nationality, it was easy to refer to his birth announcement in Hawaii. And that shut up the birthers. So if Chidima's parents need to come and tell us something, 
they would. And I'm just saying this to people who are moving to different places with shady documents or documentation that they are not really, really clear about. You may have gotten away with it, but at some point, it is going to come back. Now, nobody's saying that they have done something right or they have done something wrong. The Home Affairs already is watching out for people who may or may not have done their due diligence with documentation. And when you're relocating, we're seeing it now, Nigerians are jackpotting to Canada, to all these places. And halfway along the line, you hear that, oh, I went there on fake documents. Yeah. I went mm -hmm. there on fake documents. Oh, I didn't really know. You're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Ignorance in law is it's not an not excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's unfortunate that this young lady, her dreams have been cut short, not by what she did, mm -hmm. but what may have been done on her behalf. So, like I said, the families need to come out. There's something significant with South Africans. When a South African has a child, they try very hard to give their name to the child. Mm. So, Chidima Onwe, additional, are full Nigerian names. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens with beauty pageants is that the winners or the participants get certain um, opportunities. South Africa is already Afrophobic. They, mm -hmm. they, there's a movement called the Dudula movement that is on the tails of foreigners leave because you're taking our opportunities. Mm -hmm. So when they feel that this person might take the opportunity of somebody who might be called um, whatever their name, Teboho or whatever, and is going to a Chidima, an obviously Nigerian name, we can't be shy of what, how South Africans feel about us for whatever reasons. And then you come in and there is nothing about your South African heritage that is there. When Nigerians have children between Yorubas and Igbos, the Nigerian, the, the name mm. of the either mother or father comes in. Mm -hmm. So that is all I'm saying that let us use this opportunity to educate our people who are jackpiring to make sure that they do everything right. So that 40 years down the line, it does not come back to upset a child's um, trajectory or opportunities. So all I'm saying is that we need to hear more before we start to say, oh, South Africans, uh, whatever. Imagine a foreigner. We send, Ghana must go is a real incident. Imagine if Amma from Ghana comes here to win Miss Nigeria. What are we going to say? Nigerians, what are we going to say? Chinedu is next after this break. Just stay with us. <laughs>